Right guys, we're now going to look at theorem 3. Now before we start theorem 3a, please note that this proof is not examinable. And the reason why the proof isn't examinable is this is a very simple theorem that simply comes directly from theorem number 2. It says, the angle subtended by a diameter at the circumference of a circle is always a right angle. Now what does this mean? Well, if you have an arc AB such that AB, the line, the chord, is actually the diameter. Well, that means it goes straight across the circle. It's a straight line from A to B through the center. Well, that would mean that the angle at the center would automatically be 180 degrees. So any diameter forms an angle of 180 degrees at the center simply because it is a straight line. Well, that means that theorem 2 would have told me that the angle at the center is always twice the angle at the circumference. So any angle subtended at the circumference by this diameter would be 90 degrees. So this is in actual fact theorem 2, just applied to a specific situation. The reason we use when we use this theorem is angle in a semicircle. You could in fact use angle at center equals twice angle at circumference, but it's so much longer. So in the case of diameter, we like to use the shorter reason angle in a semicircle. Now let's have a look at theorem 3b. Theorem 3b is exactly the converse. It's exactly the opposite. It says if you have a chord that does subtend a 90 degree angle, so you're given the fact that the angle is 90 degrees, then that chord is also a diameter. So it's simply the opposite. They're giving you the 90 degrees and then you are allowed to assume that that random chord is in fact a diameter. So the circle will be somewhere on that line. The circle center, sorry, will be somewhere on that line. The reason we use when we use theorem 3b is that a chord subtends 90 degrees. Then you're allowed to assume that that chord is a diameter. Now let's look at an example. This comes straight from your textbook and it's an exercise that you will be doing in class. It says you're given a diameter AB. Now as soon as they say the word diameter you should start thinking theorem 3. You should also start thinking that you have the center of the circle, so there's radii. There was some stuff in theorem 1 about radii and center of the circle. But the key word here is the word diameter. They also told you that angle A was 27. Now as soon as I see the word diameter, I know I have 180 degrees at the center of the circle. Theorem 2 and theorem 3 will tell me that the angle at C is 90 degrees. So I will start with angle C equals 90 degrees. And instead of using... Theorem number 2's reason, it's much simpler to use theorem number 3's reason, angle in a semicircle. Well, that helps me now to form an equation because I have two angles in the triangle. So B plus 90 plus 27 must be 180 degrees. And my reason being sum of angles in a triangle. So finally, I can do some quick work on my equation and get that angle B equals 63 degrees.